Welcome back to the 22 hour channel. We are here to bring you the last big new update covering the hottest political and social events of the day. In today's news, we will have the following noteworthy information. Ladies and gentlemen, under the heavy rain in northern China, the Communist Party of China has revealed a rogue face. To ensure absolute safety for the Xiong'an New Area and Beijing Daxing Airport, seven storage areas have been used, and flood control in Hebei, including Shuju City and Langfang City, in the common parlance of ordinary people. As long as you stay in a flood containment and hold area, you will be flooded with nothing. According to the official media of the Communist Party of China, the Ministry of Water Resources of the Chinese Communist Party held a special meeting on flood prevention in the High River Basin, asking to ensure the safety of the people. Absolutely perfect for key defensive targets such as Xiong'an New Area and Beijing Daxing Airport. According to a report by the Chinese Communist Party's official media on Wednesday, seven flood storage and detention areas have been successively launched in Hebei. Ningbo is located to the east of China. Longdao District and the south of Nintan District in Xingtai City. Mainland Sea is located in the Rens District of Xingtai City. The flood division of the Shaoqing River is located in Jiuju City, Baoding City. Langkau Wai is located in Jiuju City, Baoding City. Dongdim is located in Baju City, Langfeng City. The area. Xi'an Flood Area is located in Xi'an District, Kangju City. Vindan River Flood Area is located in Guangdong District, and Nin District, Vindan District. Langfang City. According to reports, up to now, Hebei Province has continuously opened seven flood storage and detention areas, and completed the relocation of 847,400 people. In other words, nearly a million people who have been designated by the Chinese Communist Party as flood containment and detention areas will be in vain submerged. As can be seen from the geographical location, the Zhuizhou flood discharge can greatly reduce the upstream flood pressure on Beijing Daxing Airport and Xiong'an New Area. Zhuizhou, Hebei is located between Beijing and Xiong'an, with an average altitude of 37 meters, about 100 kilometers from Xi'an and about 70 kilometers from the center of Beijing. Hungan is located on the edge of Bokduong Dim Lake, with an altitude of 7 to 19 meters. The water level of Baiyangdian Lake is always stable at 6.5 to 7 meters. In the past two years, the highest water level of Baiyangdian Lake reached 7.4 meters. Just a large amount of flood from upstream, the water level of Bok Duong Dim Lake will skyrocket, directly engulfing Namdim and Tring Nguyen and Hung a new area, even threatening BAC Than. The Chinese Communist Party government first activated the flood discharge zone in Zhuizhou, Hebei, which is now the worst affected area. According to reports by the official media of the Communist Party of China, on Wednesday, in Zhuizhou, Hebei, the roads in the area were flooded, in some places up to 6 meters deep, almost as high as the height of the water. Traffic Light Although the Chinese Communist Party government claims that it should keep an eye on any flood storage and storage areas that have been opened or will be opened soon, and provide an accurate forecast of the evolution of floods in the area. However, people in Trakshao said that many people did not receive notice of flood discharge at all, or only received a notice one to two hours in advance, so they did not have time to evacuate. The video shows that early on Wednesday morning, residents confronted police on the west embankment of Sikkim Bridge in Zhuizhou, trying to prevent the authorities from digging the embankment to release flood waters. People wonder why when there is a flood discharge place, in our village, we have to dig a dike. Because there is no red paper, is it a crime for these people to voluntarily dig dikes? Since the people and the police are not against each other, why bring in such a policeman here? Help us with. It was reported that many villagers were arrested by the police, and the authorities were forced to dig a bank to release the flood, and all the neighboring villages were immediately flooded. Although the villagers knew that the Chinese Communist Party government forcibly excavated the floodplain in Zhuizhou to protect Xiong'an, they had no particular reason. From dangerous flood discharges caused by rising river levels to residents trapped in flooded cities, the situation is challenging disaster response systems, with record rainfall prolonging drains. Weeks after a strong storm for many years. As Typhoon Dok Suri made landfall in southern China, heavy rain poured down, breaking the 140-year rain record set in Beijing. 
Even the amount of rain poured into Hebe exceeds the total rainfall of the whole year. Continuing as the remnants of the storm reached China's northeastern border provinces and rain began to subside, an area the size of England struggled with the logistics of safely releasing water to the mainland, waterways and reservoirs, and rescued tens of thousands of people trapped in their homes. The High River Basin, the confluence of five rivers in northern China, is undergoing flood evolution. According to state media reports, Technical flood control systems are said to have faced their harshest tests since the 1996 flood. In the summer of 1996, widespread flooding in the Yangtze River Basin occurred. Central China has claimed the lives of about 2,800 people, damaged millions of homes, and flooded many arable lands. Authorities in Hebei raised the disaster emergency response level to 2 from 3, while Beijing maintained its warning for landslides in the suburbs. Flood waters can take up to a month to recede in Hebei. There, the city of Jiuzhou was the hardest hit. So far, about 100,000 people in the city have been evacuated, equivalent to one-sixth of the city's population, according to a water resources ministry official. China has long been aware of the risk of urban flooding, with rapid urbanization in recent years creating large urban areas covered in concrete floodplains. Extreme weather caused by global warming is making it worse. Official data shows that about 98% of China's 654 major cities are prone to flooding and inundation. China's National Weather Service said rainfall in the northeastern provinces could increase by as much as 50% in August. A severely affected area in Zhuzhou City is the town of Matu, where the road is located. Roads turned into rivers, electricity and water supplies were cut off, cell phone signals were lost, and people were trapped in their homes. Rescuers used rubber boats to reach people stuck in flooded areas. According to China's state broadcaster, in places where the water reached knee high, people were transported to safety by trucks. However, the rescue effort still faces many difficulties. Emergency management officials and local authorities have stopped accepting new rescue teams from elsewhere, citing blocked roads and lack of coordination adding to safety concerns. State media said rescuers from all over China have offered to help with flood relief in Zhuzhou, but some have not yet received approval from local officials. China now faces more stormy weather with Typhoon Cannon moving over the East China Sea towards Japan, and is forecast to make landfall in China's Zhejiang and Fujian provinces over the next two days. Flooding rains continue to submerge fields and farms in Heilongjiang, which is known as the largest granary in northern China. In many Chinese cities, Flood waters receded, revealing a landscape of desolation, while a new storm was preparing to hit, according to forecasts. Due to the impact of Typhoon Doksuri, heavy rain continued to pour down on many parts of China's largest grain-producing province today, submerging forms in the sea. Heilongjiang province, which is known as China's largest rice granary, is the latest locality to be affected by Typhoon Doksuri. Increasingly severe floods have flooded cities across the country while rescue operations following Typhoon Doksuri are underway. Doksuri is one of the strongest typhoons in China in many years, killing at least 20 people and forcing thousands to evacuate. Since making landfall in China a week ago, Typhoon Doksuri has flooded the capital Beijing and several other cities. In areas where flood waters have receded, a scene of desolation, cars overturned and flood waters appears. Heilongjiang province has warned residents of the possibility of more severe weather, including tornadoes, and raised the flood warning level to two times since last night. Some areas are now warned of rain that could flood 10 centimeters in just a few hours. In the capital Harbin, two cars plunged into a sinkhole that appeared on a highway near a river. The river's water level was rising due to flooding. Rice fields were flooded and villagers in low-lying areas were told to evacuate. Video shared on social media as shows a goat standing on a roof to avoid flooding and a pig trying to swim upstream. Rainstorms and floods caused power outages in Shanxi City, Heilongjiang Province, and supermarkets were running out of stock. Further south, in the corn-growing area of Jilin, camps were set up for 12,550 storm evacuees from the city of Shulin as floods flooded up to half a meter. Not only causing agricultural damage, floods have devastated industrial zones. Chinese aerospace products manufacturer Aerospace High Tech Holdings Group Co. said that a factory facility in Jiuzhou, Hebei province was inundated with flood water. Some production equipment was damaged, 
production activities had to be suspended. According to forecasts, another typhoon will make landfall in China after Typhoon Dokseri. Typhoon Dokseri, one of China's strongest typhoons in years, with record rainfall caused the river to rise dangerously high. In China, many residents are trapped in flooded cities, where it can take weeks for rainwater to recede. This week, Typhoon Dokseri made landfall in China with turbo rainfall, breaking a 140-year record in Beijing. In the populous province of Hebei, the amount of rain caused by Typhoon Dokseri is equal to the annual rainfall of the locality. As of Thursday, more than 1.2 million people in the Hebei floodplain have been evacuated to safety. According to the local government, rainfall in China's Hebei province has exceeded twice the capacity of large and medium-sized reservoirs. The Hai River Basin, the confluence of five rivers flowing through Hebei and Beijing, is being affected by severe flooding due to Typhoon Dokseri. Authorities in Hebei province have raised the level of emergency response to natural disasters. Beijing issued a warning about landslides in the suburbs. China's National Weather Service warned that rainfall in the northeastern provinces could be 50% higher than usual in August. In the town of Matu, Hebei, roads turned into rivers due to weather conditions. Flood water, electricity and water were cut off. There was no phone signal. Many residents were stuck in their homes. Rescuers on boats and rubber rafts went through flooded roads to bring people trapped in apartment buildings to safety. Some places in Trakshaw were even flooded up to 6 meters deep. According to forecasts, it could take up to a month for flood waters to recede in Hebei province. About 100,000 in Juju City, or one-sixth of the local population, the hardest-hit area of Hebei, have been evacuated. Our newsletter for today is here to end. Please leave any feedback below in the comments. If you find it interesting, give us a like, comment, share and press the bell to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and see you soon. That concludes today's comprehensive new bulletin on from 22 Hours Channel. Thank you all for your attention and for staying tuned until the end of this video. Please leave your comment in the comment section below for the, our team to respond in the timeline manner. Goodbye and see you again.